Hello, this is Brian Myers, and welcome to another edition of Debunking Flat Earth. We have a really good one tonight. We're going to continue in part two here, talking about ballistics and artillery. And now we're going to really bring out the big guns, because we're going to get into those very large tanks, you know, horitzers, you know, different types of cannons that will really fire ballistics for a much farther distance and with much more devastation as well. So, so one of the things that I didn't mention in the last video was we showed two different firings. One was the world record shot, and then the other was the shot by the guy at Gunworks. So that you can see he's holding his, his gun very level, right? It's maybe there's a little bit of elevation, of course, he's factoring in. I didn't mention this, but Shepard Humphreys, the shot they did was at 16 uh, degrees elevation. So they were getting more into a different type of calculation of Coriolis and the simple formulas for horizontal. In a previous video that I did, I, I, I made a mistake that, thanks to Walter Bislin for pointing this out, because I now understand all this much better. And I was trying to calculate this Howitzer here that had like a 30 mile range. I mean, just ridiculously far it can shoot. But because it's going up to an elevation, you have to use the, the vector form of the Coriolis. You can't, these simple formulas in the ballistics books are, are, are good enough because most people, when they go to a firing range, they're, they're, the elevation, they're not pointing their gun up at 30 degrees or even 16 degrees like, like Shepard did. But, so typically you don't have to use the cross product, the more, the more complicated form. And the other problem is because the flight of path is such a long time of flight, the Coriolis, the vectors are changing in midair, so you actually have to use calculus and integrate over the whole path. So this is why there's no simple formula, and this is why they have lookup tables, where, and of course with computers these days, it's all programmed into the computers now. So artillery is basically heavy-duty military weapons that have a much farther range and a much greater destructive power than typical firearms that we're all, what most of us are used to. So just for fun here, let's go through several examples of artillery and the different size shells that are used from the very small to the very large. You can see here this M61 cannon. Now this still, it kind of looks like a machine gun and this is kind of part of that gray area. Like where do you, where do you draw the line between artillery and firearms? Well, somewhere in, in this realm right here where you got a 20 millimeter bullet. These are really big bullets. I mean, compared to how most guns, how the bullets for most guns are. And, um, but still nothing compared to the, the artillery. So, so when we get up to the 40 millimeter here, or let's go to 57 millimeter, this, this is one from uh, a naval ship and it's 57 millimeter. See, to me, this is really artillery now. Now we're really getting to the realm of artillery because 57 millimeters, that's a really big bullet. And you can see the size here compared to a person, right? So, I mean, compared to your average, and this is 20 millimeters, so I mean, a nine millimeter would be just a little tiny thing over here. So when you get to fit, now this is, to me, this is really now we're getting in the realm of artillery. This is kind of, to me, this is still artillery. And again, there's no strong line, but, um, but now when we get to the howitzers and the tanks and anti-aircraft, and then we absolutely artillery now. And see this M101 howitzer here, you can see, let's see, what has it got? It's got a, um, I think, yeah, here it is. It's the 105 millimeter. So again, look at the person here. This is a very big shell. And again, it's got quite a range of very, and a lot of destructive power. And, and we're just gonna keep, it's gonna, now as we go up here to the bigger shells and the bigger firepower, um, you're gonna see, I mean, the range, even the smaller ones can have a long range, but when you get those bigger shells, they really cut through the air. So wind becomes, it's still a factor, and air resistance is still a factor, but it becomes a little more deterministic. It's still a lot of unknowns because it's going in the air so long, but, uh, but certainly the Coriolis is absolutely has to be factored in. Uh, now we've got 75 millimeter. Now, let's see, 75 millimeter here. Oh, that's this one right here. So, so you can see these are starting to get to be really big bullets, but, but it gets even better here. This is kind of cool. Um, so look at, again, we're, now we're really getting to some heavy-duty artillery here and bringing out the big guns. So now we got, this is a very standard, I'm going to show you a little video of this Howitzer here, of them actually firing in Afghanistan. I have some real footage uh, in real time. It's not, a, it's not a drill. This is real time footage from Afghanistan in 2012. I'll show you. Now this is, this is a very standard 155 millimeter um, shell. And this is a very common shell size. And, and they just kind of figured out that this gives you a nice compromise between range, destructive power, and, um, and, and they just found it's easier to kind of standardize using one size 
just makes production and things logistics a lot more. This is a 127 millimeter, let's see right here, still a big shell. It's about almost the size of the 155 here. And this is a naval, a naval gun. Um, now getting into the tanks, the Howitzer here, this one is 203 millimeter. So that's a big bullet. Now we're almost getting up to the size of a person here. Um, now here's a gun, a 305 millimeter naval gun, World War I. A huge 305, look at this, it's just a huge uh, shell. Okay, now just for fun, let's get to the biggest ones here. Um, now, now we're getting to the really big battleships, and I want to show you some footage here also from the New Jersey battleship. Uh, but now we're getting into 406. This is a 16-inch, and we're going to show you some, some charts from these Navy 16-inch um, kind of... They, they go through all the different corrections, and they teach you how to use... But they definitely factor for Coriolis, as we'll see. Uh, and now look at this, 406 millimeter... Now we got a now we got a ballistic that's bigger than a person as far as size goes, the average person. And this right here, this Japanese gun, was the largest ever in, at sea, 460 millimeter, just just huge. But but nothing compares to the Schwerer Gustav, which was used by the Germans in World War II, and it is officially the biggest. Uh, artillery ever created as far as land-based artillery goes as far as I know and you can see this person standing next to it here and it's just incredible incredible firepower and they, they didn't use it all that much and it's it's a railway gun so the, the recoil keeps it along a track here but is this is like 1200 tons or something and and I forget how much the ballistics weigh oh yeah seven tons I mean, when they're filled with the powder, this thing is like seven tons. I mean, it's just an incredible, incredible machine and uh, just amazing destructive power. So I just wanted to give you a little background so you kind of get a little feel for just the, the magnitude of the, this artillery. I mean, again, compared to what we're used to in firearms, I mean, it's, it's just a whole nother level. Now, I have a, one, a, a commenter I really love that always gives some really nice comments on my videos. He said in his comment here that a friend of his worked on these G5 and G6 Howitzers with ranges of 30 to 50 kilometers. That's like almost up to 30 miles, depending on the shell. And, and Clive uh, asked him about Coriolis, and he definitely says it's taken into account in the computer fire control system. Okay, so I want to kind of walk you through some of these, um, these manuals that really... Uh, of these different big artilleries that, that the, and the tables they use that are correct for Coriolis. And I want to start with a really kind of cool example of Battleship New Jersey. And uh, you can see the, the Battleship guns here, just absolutely humongous. These are, this is the one that was a 16 inch, uh, I forget the millimeter, 400 millimeter, whatever it was, just huge, huge, about as, almost as big as a person. And, and just kind of for effect, I want to just play this, it's a very short clip. Now, I found a really good video of a guy that's a historical curator of the Battleship New Jersey, and he's got some really great videos if you're just kind of interested in history of, of battleships like this. But I want to play this little clip where he takes you through the different wheels and... Uh, so it has nowhere near as many variables of the enemy ship moving at one time. It's got a protective cover on it, but you would remove this, and it works much like a... Uh, plotting table in that you put down a chart and then uh, an onion skin over it, plot out, we want to fire into this grid sector. And it will give you some rough computation. You got some wheels over here for wind speed and curvature of the earth, the core analysis effect, things like that, that are going to impact your shells. So you can see these wheels here, they do, they do absolutely adjust for the curvature of the earth and for Coriolis. And the Coriolis is adjusted for, as we'll see, in both elevation or range and the azimuth or the side to side deflection. So let's kind of go through some of these manuals here and, and, and a couple of them are very similar as we'll see, but, but beginning with the Navy and, and the one that, um, in the, in the Battleship New Jersey, which is a 16 inch uh, shell, and we're gonna see the manual for that is based on a, a 16 inch 50 caliber. And again, these, these 
These artillery projectiles travel a long distance and spend a considerable amount of time in the air. And again, like I said before, the longer the time the projectile is in the air, the more Coriolis is going to affect it, deflect it, or affect its range. And again, this is why military, they have these tables, or nowadays with the computers, it has to account for the Coriolis. And the first one is the Navy. We're just going to go through this. You can read this on your own. But, um, but it's very interesting, I want to highlight that they actually, as you heard him say at the Battleship New Jersey, they have wheels for adjusting for curvature of the Earth. What I love about the long-range artillery, and, and why I say it's bringing out the big guns to debunk flat Earth, is that it both shows that the Earth is curved and that it's spinning. I, I just love it. I mean, this is just a great little thing to bring up in debates, or if you are talking to people that are on the fence, because you've got both curvature and spin. Those are the two big things, right? The Earth is curved, it's a sphere, and it's rotating. Flat Earth, they say the Earth is flat and it's stationary. And so this debunks both. Okay, so here's the curvature of the table. And so they, they are correcting for the drop. Now, besides curvature, again, like I said, you have to, the, these manuals talk about the effects of rotation on the Earth for both range and deflection. So they have charts that are separate for both deflection side to side and the up and down range. So you can see the tables here. This is now range. So we talked de deflection is side to side. Range is going to be farther or shorter. So again, the thing about this document, it, again, it shows you that the Navy for the battleship New Jersey that you saw, and we even heard the guy say, he showed you the wheels inside there that, that corrected for curvature and for Coriolis. Now getting into actual on the land, looking at the Army and the Marines now, I just want to play this little clip, because like I said, this is an actual Horwitzer 155 millimeter shell, but, but just watch this, because this is a real mission. This is not a drill. Stand by. Is that right? That's just incredible firepower. And you saw the guy off to the right there. He was the one making the adjustments. So, so very likely he was getting information from a forward observer and to make the corrections. But still, they do account for Coriolis, wind, uh, drag, you know, ballistics coefficients, uh, spin drift. You know, all these things are factored into the initial shots. Let's go to the, some of the manuals with the Army and the Marines. So going through this... Um, this gunnery manual here, again, this is from Walter Business, and I'll put a link to Walter's page. It's, it's worth checking this out directly. And, and Walter highlights here how it goes through the rotation of the Earth. So again, you can just see the, the rotation, just very clear, has to correct for deflection of the rotation of the Earth. And the tables here are related to the azimuth, the, the right to left deflection, depending on, it depends on latitude, depends on the direction you're firing, and your elevation. You have to factor all those things in. So these tables, you, you look up your latitude, your, eleva your elevation angle, and the direction you're firing, and it will tell you the amount of deflection and the amount of range that you have to adjust for. And so you can see here, I mean, you, check out Walter's site. I'll put a link below this video. But definitely, definitely is a big whole section of it here in, the, in this Army artillery manual. And this is updated 2016, so they are definitely according for Coriolis. Now, the Marines one, we don't really need to spend too much time because it's essentially the same thing. Um, again, they even have table H and I. That's when I realized, like, oh, it's, they're also using H and I, but it's, they're using the same manual, more or less. And the same charts, table H that we just looked at. Again, correcting for, for both the side-to-side -side and the, the range itself, up and down. Okay, besides the, the land and the sea-based sort of uh, artillery, uh, guided missiles also correct for, for Coriolis and nuclear weapons. And this is right here from a book called Principles of Guided Missiles and Nuclear Weapons. 
This is actually, I made a typo. This is page 35, not 36. But on page 35, it says the Coriolis force must, must, I underline must here, also be compensated for. It is caused by the Earth's rotation. It tends to deflect a missile to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. As the Earth turns on its axis, so it goes on to explain the Coriolis here, and the amount of deviation produced by the Coriolis force depends on latitude, length, and direction of the missile flight. So the longer it's in the air, the more deflection is going to take place. This is another book. I'll put a link to this book, too. This is an online book you can look up. It's a Field Artillery, Volume 6. And you can see a whole section on Coriolis here. And, oh, this is a really good little book uh, by the Historic Naval Ships Association. So this link will give you this nice little PDF that talks about all these different things that be factored in. You know, the projectile velocity, the parallax, the curvature, the earth rotation, gravity, air resistance, wind range, elevation of target. So it's just, it's, it's got really nice pictures and it explains it really simply so you can follow along. And you can see here on this graphic that curvature of the earth, rotation of the earth, are definitely two factors that are, that are taken into account on all these long range uh, artillery. Uh, it's just absolutely a thing. And for flat earthers to deny it, it's like all these manuals, all these ships, all these guns, they, they have Coriolis settings. It's like, do, they, does, do flat earthers really just think this is all just made up? I mean, it's just so ridiculous. I mean, I could make this an hour long video. There's just so many examples of artillery that uses Coriolis settings that factors for Coriolis, you know, with tables or computerized systems, it absolutely has to be accounted for. And, and to me, this is a, a very powerful piece of evidence that the earth is both spinning and has curvature. Something like ballistics and artillery, we have applied engineering that we can see these principles at play. And certainly a powerful piece of evidence because we have to account for if we want to make an accurate shot. So I hope you enjoyed this bringing out the big guns and um, do like and share this video and leave some comments. I'd love to hear what you think. So thanks again for watching and have a great night.